Hey everyone, hope you're okay. Today I'm going to be breaking down this effect that I created the other day for the Dark Following 2 and decided as a test to just put it into a short little skit that I did in my garden and a lot of people were actually asking how I did it and I thought I'd break down the process of it because there were a lot of elements involved in it including 3D fire simulation as well as just general compositing tips and tricks so I thought I'd kind of show you guys how I went about creating this. So first of all, the main explosion that you see is actually not a 2D stock footage. It's actually a 3D simulated fire particle system created using the amazing Jenga FX Embergen, which if you go to their website, it's amazing. I'm going to make a video on their technology in general because it's incredible. But long story short, you can create incredibly quick and fast and very realistic looking fire effects now in Blender using this Embergen software and if you just head to their website you can subscribe to create your own fire simulations but they do have a page that just has free downloads just waiting there which you can download and use however you wish so i downloaded this gasoline explosion which downloads as a vdb file which you need the experimental version of blender 2.83 in order to import volumes in you'll see on 2.83 when you go to add there's a new volume import open vdb file there which doesn't exist on the standard version of blender at the moment and you import all of your vdb files into it and this is what you get uh that doesn't look very interesting so let's go to the material preview and you'll see that right here we have a 3d fire simulation which we can play through and i'm not going to play through it in case it crashes because there's a lot running at the moment but you can see we can move around this completely 3d simulated bit of fire and it looks pretty good all that's happening here for the materials is we just literally plugged in a principled volume into the volume shader and then it's using the temperature because it saves each individual aspect of the fire simulation and we're basically applying a black body intensity of one and a higher temperature to the temperature value and that's giving it that nice fiery orange glow that will then turn into smoke so very easy and simple to create fire using embergen and blender now and as I say, I'll do a full breakdown on how exactly this works in another video. But for now, you can see what's really great about this fire simulation using Blender as opposed to 2D stock footage is that this is great because the shot that we're using is just head on and a 2D bit of stock footage would suffice. But if we wanted to, we could move the camera wherever we want and simulate the same explosion and get it from loads of different angles. So you're very, very free to use the explosion however you wish whereas stock footage is you're locked into whatever angle the footage is filmed from so that's that and then all we did was put a camera there we didn't need the whole width we just needed the height of it so the dimensions were as follows 820 by 1080 rendered out png sequence got the whole explosion alpha background done that's the fire that's it as i say i'll go into more detail on that in another video but that was that now we take this into After Effects and we'll get to that in a second, but let's just have a look at this clip. So all I did was went out into my garden. Oh, there's me. I'm going to get off that. That's a weird angle. Went into my garden and just put my camera down on a gorilla pod and just filmed myself. My neighbors probably thought I looked like a complete idiot because without any of the effects, I look like a right Muppet just kind of reacting to nothing, snapping my fingers, doing some stretches. So all of this is there's nothing happening along this first bit. And originally I was just going to have it so I was snapping my fingers and nothing was happening but I thought as a piece of storytelling within the short video that's not very engaging, it's not very exciting and as you're watching it you're probably thinking what is happening whereas if we see this new spark effect suddenly you're like oh that's, that's a bit jammy. So what are we doing with the spark effect here? Well actually the first thing you're probably wondering is how is the camera moving if it's on a tripod? Well if we take a look at all of the layers down here all of the, I probably could have pre-composed those sparks into a single layer, but I've left them out just for this moment. But what we've got essentially is the base piece of footage is parented to this null, and this null has a wiggle value, wiggle value, and this null has a wiggle value attached to it. God, that's a mouthful. Wiggle value attached to it, and essentially what that's doing is if we put the null in here, it's basically shaking the null around. Um, so that it's basically simulating camera shake and because the null is an invisible object it means anything we parent to it will also follow the same 
parameters. So that means that obviously the footage is attached to it. So that's going to get that same shaky effect. And it just adds that little bit more of dynamic nature to the shot. Just instead of keeping it still, it doesn't make sense, obviously, because it's on a tripod. But for this context, it doesn't really matter. It gives it a bit more energy. It creates a bit more tension because you're a bit uneasy throughout it. Now, the sparks, when I got onto the sparks, all they are, are literally just the stock assets from Action VFX, just Spark 13. I think these ones are free even, and you can just download them. And if I show you what they are, it's literally just this effect. That's all it is. It's just the spark. That's it. Excuse the low render resolution, but that's all the spark effect is. I made sure to keep my hand pretty still. I couldn't be bothered with motion tracking. So it just means that when I snap, my hand stays still. And because the spark is also attached to the null, it means that you're going to get that camera motion following it as well. So all in motion, you can't really notice that it's just a static image or a static video just attached on top. Now, the key thing here that I wanted to focus on was the reflection, because without the reflection, it's something that is one of those things in an effect where if it's missing, you don't really notice that it's missing. But there's something wrong about it when you're watching it and it's hard to place because it's such a short effect you wouldn't really be able to pick it out but it's something that just that little bit of extra time and work can really just help sell the effect by just going that extra mile so all i did was literally duplicate it this this layer here duplicate it move it down mask it out so that it cuts off where the edge of the reflective glass cuts off because we don't want it coming where the glass isn't because this glass is quite dark all of the reflections are quite dark as well all I did was just put a levels effect on top and just brought the highlights way, way down as opposed to they were up around there at first, but I brought them down to about, whoops, brought them down to there. And that just helps blend it into the scene a bit better, makes it a bit more physically accurate. So those are the sparks. All of the sound effects were done in Premiere afterwards, which I'm not really going to get into, but essentially they're just the Video Copilot Motion Pulse Pack. And I just had to sift through and how to listen to what worked and what didn't all right let's get into the layers now of what's happening there's structure to this very simple video as well in order to create a little bit of storytelling so you've got the intro where i introduce to the camera some stretching which all seems normal the sparks then help lead up to this effect because if you imagine this entire video is nothing happens for 54 seconds you could still have the same sort of shock value when this effect happens but you need to keep people's attention. People switch off easily. People got to like the 40 second mark and they're like, this, what, am, what is happening? Nothing's happening. He's just clicking his fingers. And then you'd switch off. So the sparks introduce the idea that something is going to happen. You'll notice there's no need for a reflection for this effect because my hand isn't in the reflection. And here we go. Here's what we're waiting for. The big explosion. So layer by layer, let's figure out what's happening. So the spark goes off. Now we have the a Saber effect, which is a free video copilot plugin. Would highly recommend going and downloading it to After Effects package if you haven't done so already. As I say, it's free and you could do a lot with it, so why not? And it's very it's got a very small install size as well, so there's literally no reason why you shouldn't have it installed. All that I did was put an A to B point on the core. I made it go from above and down to my feet. And I changed the core size so that the start or the front side of it was bigger than the end side to give it that element of momentum. If I change the size here just to kind of one, that's what it would be without that. But if we have the end on 200% and, well, sorry, the start on 200% and the end on 0%, you get that nice illusion of power is coming down. There's a bit of a directional blur as well to give it that motion blur look. Strikes down. Now, the VDB file for this explosion has this weird blob at the start, which I wasn't a big fan of, but it's free, so I'm not going to complain. And luckily, it only lasts for literally one or two frames, which in the grand scheme of things, you're not going to notice in motion. Now, let's just skip ahead here and we'll break down layer by layer what's happening and what are the elements I added in to create this effect. So we've got our main explosion there with an extra glow applied to it just to stand out and match the levels of the camera. A hue saturation, I was playing around with it being maybe more of a purple color like that, which in the second video that you're gonna see has a more purple effect. Uh, but I thought for this one, the orange just kind of worked nice. It matches the rest of the scene in terms of color tone. The purple doesn't really match there. So 
just tinted it a little bit more to the red side. I did have curves on it as well, but it was too bright. It needed to match with the exposure levels of the scene. So there we go. We left it at that. And that's pretty much it. And that's just parented to ah, the explosion. So I created another null to parent all the explosion elements to, which is then parented to a shake null. Now the shake null, as you see, when the explosion hits, this uh, smooth shaky can we've got here, well, that's not enough for when an explosion hits. We need it to be quite violent when it hits. So all that we've got on the shake null is essentially just another null with a parameter applied to it, which is a slider. And what the slider allows you to do is, whereas on the normal wiggle expression, you've got the two values, they're fixed, you can't change them. All we did was parent the first value using the pick whip tool to this slider control, which allows us to manually adjust that value whenever we want by keyframing it. So this slider, obviously when the explosion hits, whacks the value up to 25 before bringing it back down to zero. So we get that extreme increase of shake as that explosion hits right there and then back down to zero. So that's how the parenting works. I'm not 100% happy with this. Uh, this literally took a couple of hours, but going forwards into the dark following two, obviously there'll be more time spent on perfecting it and the whole situation would just make more sense. I didn't even know what effect I would do when I was standing in my garden, how it would all look. So this was a good way to test it out. I need to find a way to blend the dirt into the fire a bit better because it kind of looks like it's just sitting behind it in this freeze frame. In motion, it kind of works. But anyway, what's happening here? So the first thing you'll notice is, uh, well, the explosions there. We've spoken about that. That's all done already. Nothing else needs to happen there. This dirt blast, if we take the explosion off, this dirt blast is from Action VFX, which is a pack that I bought. Uh, really, really great. It's worth buying a couple of these if you're doing any sort of action orientated visual effects. They're just great for any sort of explosions or kicks up of dust or anything like that. They're really great to have. You also get these little chunks of ground landing as well, which just add to the whole illusion that is interacting with the world. Now, this dirt blast effect, I actually applied a force motion blur because the original effect has has no motion blur applied to it. The shutter speed is very, very high. It looked out of place considering the camera's got this nice smooth motion, but the video clip of the dust is just, you can see every single frame very clearly. And that's great that you can play with that, but it didn't fit very well with the scene. So I applied this force motion blur, which essentially just blurs gives it that illusion of motion blur because it's quite a violent and fast paced effect you see there it just adds to that intensity of it by adding that motion blur to it there so that's all that's doing because it's pre-keyed there's no need to add any screen or any mode any blending mode to it at all so that's that right next few layers are these dust wave layers which again action vfx all they are are uh, just that's pretty much all it is just these dust wave effects to give the illusion that it's kicking up dust and dirt and interacting with the world. Same with uh, this layer here. Pretty much just a couple of those just to give the illusion that there's been an impact and it's kicking up dust and dirt. And really take note of where the effect is happening and what would happen realistically if your effect would happen. So on grass, on mud, there would be some dust, there would be some dirt kicked up into the air. If it was on concrete, you want to add a sort of cracked effect or maybe there'll be some more debris flying around. Just really have a think about what your effect is and cater to that. Now, the other thing as well is obviously this is an explosion and it's creating light. And in the scene, I didn't have any light to play with. So all I did was duplicate the plate, mask it around where I thought the light would mainly be impacting. So that's primarily the ground, a bit of the cabin there, and a bit off to the side, left and right. And just apply it a curve value, which I t if I take that off, that's how dark it is normally. Just give it that glow and a bit of red to match with the lighting color to give that light interaction. And then all that does is just fade out in opacity. You see here, fades in really quick and then fades out to zero as the fire fades away. And one of the last things we've got down here is this burn mark, which where is it? Burn mark. All that is, again, action VFX. I think this is a free effect. It's just a texture overlaid on top. Pretty much just appears. You can use stuff like explosions and shake to hide transitions in and out of different elements. So the shake was a good place to just 
quickly add in stuff without having to bother about masking it or scaling it because it's going so quick and there's so much camera shake that you don't need to worry about it. You can just plonk, you can just plump, plump, plonk stuff there. And all of these elements are parented to the explosion null, which is parented to the shake null, which is parented to our main overall camera shake so that when that shake null goes back to zero, it's still following that nice smooth camera movement that we always had from the start. Any other elements that are happening? Oh, just another spark again, just to give it that interaction with the ground. Ah, and the last thing is where did I go? Because obviously I'm here and then I'm not. This is just a really simple, basic, like back to basics effect where I was standing there, did the effect, and then all I did was run away. I just ran out of shot. All that's happening here is when that explosion goes off, we're then using it as a way to basically cut to the next shot where I am no longer in the shot. And that's it. That That's all it is. Now, the one thing I did notice, however, and this was a bit of problem solving I had to do, was the clouds were actually moving so fast that by the time I moved out of shot here, the clouds had jumped in position in the sky. So just simply cutting from here and cutting a couple of seconds out, you really noticed that the shot had changed because the clouds had moved. I think the trees had blown. Uh, let me try and show you that actually what that looks like if I were to just... All right, if I take the mask off, you'll see what happens here up in the clouds. When it cuts to that shot where I've disappeared, notice how the clouds have moved quite a lot and the tree has moved shape. Now, obviously, that's going to be really jarring and really ruin your effect. So all I did was mask out the bottom half where nothing where you can't really notice anything's changed and keep the clouds from that original base layer up moving as they were and just keep the part now down here where I've moved out of frame and just masked around. And that's that's all that I did. And that's it. That's that's all it is, really. So it's just a lot of basically pre-keyed effects just parented together essentially and then just using your own eye and your own intuition to the effects as to how best to blend stuff together as I say how would the lighting interact with the scene how would dust and dirt interact how would camera shake impact it if your explosion is really far away you might not want the camera shake to happen until maybe a second or a couple of seconds afterwards because that's how an explosion would work the sound wouldn't hit you uh, until a bit afterwards whereas here it's right there in front of you think about your storytelling as well if you're going to lead up to an effect how can you intrigue the audience to stay interested in your video without them just dropping off halfway through so start leading your effects up go that extra mile adding that little extra bit of work to sound effect even though it might seem like oh no one's going to notice it like it's it's going to be literally for half a frame yeah but not having that half a frame worth of effect in it is going to make your audience question the believability of the effect. That's what you don't want. You don't want people sitting there going, oh, that's obviously an effect. The more you can do to make people think, what, how did they, but he's got the thing there, but th there's a reflection in the window. How did that happen? Even if it's just for a second, if you can do that, then you're winning a visual effects. If you get people questioning how you did something, that is really what's going to make that difference. And that's going to be really satisfying when people are like, ah, how did you do that? which I had a few people asking me with this, with the spark. So that was a, a great sign that the effect had worked. Obviously, the big explosion at the end is not real. <laughs> Still, it was fun to do. Even the fact that I disappear, people were like, what? Uh, it's a very simple effect. So that's that. That's how I made this explosion. And if I show you it all without even any of the plate. So this is the effect that we're going to be looking at to use in the Dark Following 2. I'm not going to tell you the context of it because that will be a bit of a spoiler. But that was just something I was working on in these troubling times. It was hard to actually get out and go to a forest or somewhere and practice this with someone. So I just thought, screw it, do it myself in the garden and managed to make a little story out of it. So that's it from me. If you have any more questions about how I produce this effect or want to know a bit more in depth about any of the specific parameters or techniques that I use, please leave a comment down below. And do subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. That really does help me out. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it or if you learned something new to help support myself during this time. I've got a Patreon set up and there's a link to that in the description as well. If you wouldn't mind heading over there and just dropping anything you can to just help support A, the funding of the film and B, my life. <laughs> uh, that would be really, 
really great. If you're interested in seeing more of these tutorials, then yeah, stay subscribed and I'll see you guys in the next video.